So now we're going to look at the different type of sampling methods that are out there in the real world, or at least five of them. Uh, the first one is the most basic one. It's the simple random sample. Uh, we do it pretty often. We actually we call it an SRS. That's the acronym simple random sample. And uh, the reason we call it simple is because there's no grouping initially. So no grouping uh, before sampling. All right, so a simple random sample of size n is a sample that is selected from a population in a way that ensures every possible sample of the desired size has the same chance of being selected. All right, so that's the formal definition. And this property, I'm gonna read it now, but I'm really gonna address it when we get on the, uh, onto the next page and look at the four other sampling methods because I wanna show you why the four remaining sampling methods are not technically an SRS, and they fail this, this property. So the definition of a simple random sample implies that every individual member of the population has an equal chance of being selected and every group of size n is possible. So it's this part, the every group is possible. That's what's gonna fail when we get to the other four sampling methods. So let's look at our, our example of how to do an SRS here. So we have a small private college has 4,500 students enrolled. Assume that the university can provide a list of the students with the students numbered from 1 to 4,500. Describe the procedure you will use to select a simple random sample of 20 students and then identify by, which, by number which students from the list are included in your sample. So let's take a step back, think about this. We're at a school. It's got 4,500 students. We don't want to run the census. So let's get a random sample of 20, and let's specifically get a simple random sample, which means I'm not gonna group them ahead of time, not gonna break them by gender or class status, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, none of that. I'm just gonna, there are 4,500 of them. Now, in stats, we have three methods of getting SRSs. This is the old school one. This is the one we used to have to do before we had technology. We would actually sit and write out 4,500 identical slips of paper. So I take a piece of paper, I write the number one on it. Same type of piece of paper, write the number two on it. Same type of piece of paper, write the number three on it. All the way out to 4,500. And you can imagine how much time that took. It stunk, but now we, and we do have technology now, which we'll use, but we got 4,500 slips of paper in the old school way. What I do is I stick them in a giant container, a bowl, a hat, just depending on how many slips of paper I had, mix them up, I take the first piece of paper out. Let's say it said student 107. I go look on my, my roster, find student 107. That student would now be part of my SRS. I would not take that, that slip of paper and put it back in the pot. I'd leave it out because I already selected that student. I don't want to select the same one again. Take a new slip of paper. Let's say that was student 1905. Then I go onto my roster and find student 1905, say, hey, welcome to my SRS. Right? And at that point, I only have the two students. I'd still keep 1905 out of, the, out of the hat, go back in, get another slip of paper, another slip of paper. I'd repeat that 20 times until I had 20 different students selected for my sample. So that is by far the longest, the longest of all of the methods. It's the one we don't use anymore, but I want to mention it. Uh, just because I'm a stats teacher, got to tell you a little bit about history. So let's try it on the calculator. All right, so I'm going to tell you the calculator is the best way to get your SRS. Hey, Math43, I want to show you how you can get a simple random sample from your calculator. We're going to be using this example where we had a population of 4,500 students, and I would like to just get a quick little SRS of 20 of them. So if you're on your calculator, we're gonna go identify the random number generator. It's kind of hidden in your calculator, but we're gonna find it. So locate the math key. It's right below your alpha key, and let's hit math. Uh, if you did the chapter one math interlude, we had talked about math frac together, so we've used math uh, and option one before. This is the math menu. Maybe in a previous math class, you've cubed something or taken a cube root or found a min and max. It's fine if you have and fine if you haven't. We're gonna to scroll to the right. This is the number menu. 
Um, maybe you've used those functions before in your math class. Again, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Doesn't matter either way. We want to go all the way to the right and get to the PRB menu. And that stands for probability. And that is something we're going to do in stats. So we will, uh, once we get to chapter four, we will use option three and option four, but we're not there yet. What we're going to use today is random int. So you can scroll down to option five and hit enter, or you could just type in the number five. And I like to be efficient with my calculator. I'm lazy. I don't want to scroll down five times and then hit enter when I can just hit one button push. All right, so we've got random int. I'm going to show you how this function works in your calculator. And you can use random int with either two entries or three entries. So the first iteration of this, I'm going to do two entries. And the second iteration, I'm going to do all three entries. And then you can decide which one you want to use. So what your rand int definitely needs is a low to high situation. And where am I getting low to high? All right, I had 4,500 students in my population. So I can probably go to the registrar's office and get an alphabetical list and number these students from one to 4,500, okay? Now the smallest number I've assigned to a student is one, and the highest number I've assigned to a student is 4,500. And your calculator needs that information. It needs to know the low and the high so it can grab numbers. So I need to tell my calculator, hey, I need a random int between one and 4,500. And you need to separate those two numbers with a comma. You can find your comma key just above the seven. So hit comma 4,500 and close that parentheses. Okay. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit enter. And for my calculator, this will be different for yours, my calculator punched back 4247. Great, that's fine. So I will go find student 4247 on my roster, put that student in my sample. And keep in mind, I needed to get an SRS of 20, so I still need 19 more of these. So I can just hit enter repeatedly and continue to get number after number after number. Or you could go math, PRB, five, it's up to you. So here are your options, right? We could go through this whole rigmarole again. One comma 4,500 and hit enter. There's my next random digit. Or once you have a command in your calculator, if you hit enter, it'll just keep repeating it. Enter, enter, enter. So you start to see my random sample. Now for some calculators, it depends on which edition you have, it won't repeat the command. Like you won't see this line, you'll just see the number 198 right below it. So if, if it's not repeating the command, no problem. Just depends on how new or how old your calculator is. I can tell you for the, the actual physical calculator I own, it doesn't put that command in there. So I don't see this line every time. It's fine. So I just keep hitting enter till I get my 20 distinct numbers. And this is all fine and good. You know, I'd have to write each number down one at a time, not too terrible. But let me show you a different option. I'm gonna clear this out, okay? I'm gonna clear this out, and I'm gonna restart this. But instead of putting two numbers in this time, I'm gonna put three. So here we go, I'm gonna go math. Now I'm gonna get super lazy. I'm just gonna hit the left arrow key to go to the PRB dropdown menu. Option five, one comma 4,500. And now we're gonna add this third number. So I'm gonna hit the comma key again. And what your calculator can do is it can, it can produce multiple random numbers at once. And ultimately, I would like 20 of these. So if I add that third number into that string, what my calculator is going to do is get me 20 random digits between 1 and 4,500. So now when I hit Enter, it'll punch them all back. And it's a little bit tricky to see because it's written horizontally. But you can see my first one, again, for my calculator, your calculator will generate different numbers. 3592, 4284, I think 995. Um, it's got to be 995 because there's nothing larger than that. Uh, nothing with a 9 that's larger than that. Um, let me scroll to the right, and you can start to see the next one is 1663. And then we got 36, 4209. And as I go through this, I'd have to check to make sure there weren't repeats. If there is a repeat, if that happens, just run the calculator command again until you get 20 distinct numbers. All right, so for me, this is all fine and good. I just, I personally don't like the horizontal view. It doesn't work for my brain as well. I like it if I could see them all at once. So I wanna show you a different option. So let me clear this out, okay? 
and I'm going to rerun this command. So let's just review it, right? Hit Math. I go to the PRB drop-down menu, Option 5, lowest number assigned, comma, highest number assigned, comma, number of digits that I want from that low and the high. All right, so what you're allowed to do in, in these calculators is they have a little bit of mem memory. And this STO, this key that's right above your on key, that stands for store. So you can store information into different places. And I'm going to show you how, in this example, we're going to store some information into a list. So don't, don't punch this on your calculator, but I, I want to show you where this is going to wind up. So I am going to store this. If you look right now, L1 is blank. I'm going to store these 20 digits into L1. Okay. So if I go back to my home screen, let me scoot to the right of this command. There we go. All right, I'm going to hit the STO button. When I do, a little arrow is going to show up on my graphing calculator. So you see it. And then I'm going to store it into L1, which we do with second and then the number one. So I'm storing those 20 digits into L1. I'm going to hit Enter. And then you get that same interface where you could scroll horizontally to see your, your 20 numbers. But go back into your list. Let's hit Stat and Enter. And you see that they're there vertically and I'm not scrolling as much. So again, for me, this works better. I can actually see all of these. I can go to the top and just scroll up. Hey, I, I find that visual better for my brain. If that doesn't work as well for you, stick with the horizontal one. No harm, no foul. But there you go. There's a look as to how you can get a random number or multiple random numbers from your calculator. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right, the third way to get a random digit table, and this is the way that you will see this on quizzes and tests. And the reason you'll see this method, because you might say, well, why aren't we using the best method on on our test, it's because when you use the calculator, everybody gets different answers. But when I put you on the random digit table, everybody will get the exact same answers. So we'll all get the same numbers here, where you might not, or actually it's very unlikely we get the same numbers here. So let me show you how to start using a random digit table. You can find that random digit table over on Canvas. I just have this one, so we'll, we'll take a look at it in a moment. So how this is gonna work is, We've got 4,500 students. So look at your sample size, or excuse me, your population size when you start to use this random digit table. And look at the highest number in there. So this is gonna be how we're gonna do method three. So for the highest number in there, all right, my largest number is 4,500. And if you count, 4,500 needs one, two, three, four digits to make that number. So if it takes four digits to, to make the largest number in your population, that's how many digits at a time you're gonna rip from the random digit table. Now I'm giving you a direction that says start at line 127. Okay, so I'm gonna go to line 127. I gotta give you a starting point. Okay, so let's go to line 127 and I'm gonna take four digits at a time. And I know this is a little hard to see in here, but if you zoom in, you'll be able to, or if you get your own random digit table, you'll see where I'm going. All right, so here's line 127. That doesn't actually count as any of my digits, but I'm gonna take a look at the first four digits that come out of here. And if I look at those first four digits, I'm gonna see 4390. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that in mind, that the first student in my sample is student number 4390. Okay, so one student down, 19 to go. All right, now I'm gonna take this leftover nine and combine it with the next three digits because I'm taking four at a time. So if you look, my next three digits are nine, 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 four. There is no student that exists in this school with the number 9994 because 
there's only there's only 4,500 of them, so this winds up being a useless grab, which is fine. It happens all the time. If I take the next four numbers, I'm looking at 7725. Right? That is also not a student that exists. But if I look at the next four, I've got 3306. Right? And that's a new number. So let me take 3306, put that student in my list. So I would go find whichever student was attached to that number. All right, again, two down, 18 to go. All right, so we've got 4359. That is another student. And I'm just gonna do the next one because I see it 4008. So 4359 and 4008. Okay. All right, so 5169 doesn't exist, but 2585 exists. And so does 1730, or excuse me, 1173. So 2585, 1173. 2585, 1173. All right, 6071 doesn't exist. And when you run out of digits, just start in on the next row. Even if this one happened to end nicely, there happen to be four digits here. Even if, let's say there were two, I would just go around to line 128 and get the next two. So just keep going with however many digits you have. All right, we got 1568, that student exists. 94, 9142 doesn't, okay, 1568. All right, so I'm just gonna find the rest of my, my sample. Gotta be careful. Oh, I messed up. Okay. All right, so nine, five, eight, nine didn't exist. Eight, four, six, two, eight, eight, two does. Okay. So let's talk about this one, 0300. The lead zero just means the number 300. So there is student 300 somewhere in that list. And if I needed to represent that student as a four digit number, it would be 0300. So you can write it either way, but really it's student 300 coming into my sample. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting down to the last one. Four, oh, six, four. Okay. Let's just take a moment, make sure I don't have any repeats. If I do, no problem, just get an extra, as many extra numbers as you need until you have no repeats. No, it's not looking like any of them doubled up. So here is my simple random sample of 20 using the digit table. So you can see the digit table takes so much longer because you have 4,500 digits from zero to 4,500 that are good to go. Oh, excuse me, zero, zero, one. 0001 to 4,500 that are good to go. I think I wrote 45,000. I'm messing up on all fronts. These are valid numbers from the table. But you can imagine if you come across four digits and you get anything between 4,600 and 9999 or 0000, these are invalid numbers for this particular setup. That's why we just ran into so many digits that we couldn't use. And that's gonna happen. That's again, that's the drawback of using the random digit table. So the plus for me as a teacher is that you're gonna get the same answers. Every single student should get the same answers. The drawback is it takes a little longer. The calculator is nicer because you can just cater it to exactly what you need. No problem there. All right, so let's just try another one just for fun. So I hear this all the time or I used to when I was in my clubbing days. I'd hear, oh, I met a random guy at a club. I doubt you actually met somebody random. So let's pretend it's Friday night. We're all going to club stats. Oops, I can't even spell it. Club stats. All right. And then you're looking fly. Uh, is about as good as I can look in my drawings. And don't forget, you have your TI-84 calculator that you're definitely bringing in with you, all right? It is just a magnet for folks you wanna meet. Okay, it's a definite conversation starter. So we're gonna take our, our calculator in here and let's just say, for example, there are 200 folks, 200, I'll say for me, 200 dudes I wanna meet, okay? I don't care which one, I really wanna use the phrase, I, I wanna meet a random guy. So the first thing I have to do is assign each guy a number between one and 200, okay? So I gotta assign these guys a number one between, between one and 200. So I go up to the first guy, you're number one, number two, so on and so forth, all 200 guys. Pull out my TI-84 calculator, okay? So now if there's, let's say out of these 200, if I'm gonna play the odds, I probably need three phone numbers by the time I'm done, maybe to get one date. So I wanna get an SRS of three dudes. Here we go. So I'm gonna hit my math key. I'm gonna go over to PRB. I want option five, we want a random integer. And I would like to start at the number one go to the number 200 and end with three, okay? Because I want three at a time. Now you could do one number three times over. I'm just lazy, I'm gonna get all three of mine at the same time. So, ooh, I get to meet dude 114. So I'll put this as with the calculator. I'm gonna meet guy 114, one and 65. And if I had gotten repeats, no problem. I would have just gone until I had three distinct numbers, okay? Now, let's say, you're not feeling like bringing your TI-84 calculator in, but instead, you're gonna hide your random digit table somewhere in your pocket, and it's just gonna have a whole bunch of digits. You're gonna pass them out, or you're gonna look at it when you need to. You're still gonna assign each guy a number between one and 200, but instead of using your calculator, you think to yourself, well, the largest number I'm gonna assign out of my population is 200, and it takes three digits to make that number, okay? So I need to pull from my table three digits at a time. It doesn't matter which row you start with. Um, let me get a random number, just so I'm not choosing anything. It looks like our lines go from 101 to 150. So I will ask my calculator to go from 101 to 150. And let's see what line it gives me, 134. So I'm gonna start at line 134 and take three digits at a time. So let me go back to line 134. Here we go, the first 
three digits I see are 278. That guy doesn't exist, so I'm not going to use that number. The next three digits are 167. That guy does exist, so that's who's making it into my sample. All right, so when I use the random digit table, Guy 164, I think it was 164, let me double check. Yeah, nope, 167, excuse me. It was line 134. Okay, so I gotta go back out because I need two more guys, so here we go. All right, so as I go along here, the next three numbers I see are 841, that guy doesn't exist. 618, that guy doesn't exist. 329, doesn't exist. 213 doesn't exist. 373 doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Aha, 043. That guy exists. So that's guy number 43. Okay, I still need one more, so I'm going to go back out. Oh, I'm lucky. Here's the next one 126. That guy exists. So we got 126, that is the last number I'm going to need. So you can see if I wanted to repeat this process, going clubbing and really meeting a random person. So I could walk in on Monday and be like, Mr. Bray, I met a random, a random guy or a random chick, whatever you're into. You, you'd be able to actually do it. You either, you either need your random digit table, your TI-84 calculator, but the tough part is you got to assign those numbers before you even get started and that can take a little while. So. I got these three guys I can meet, these three guys I can meet, whatever way I want to do it.